Brother Captain Stern stood directly in the center of the teleport pentagram. He glanced around him at his fellow Grey Knights. His gimlet gaze seemed to look directly into each man's soul and seek out any flaw there. His battle brothers met his gaze without flinching. Stern felt secure in the knowledge that their faith in the Emperor was unshakable, and that no impious thought allowed any chink in their spiritual armor. Robed tech priests moved around the edges of the pentagram, being careful not to cross any of the silver lines and disturb the forces that would soon shift the Terminators across the warp and bring them to grips with their foes. Hooded apprentices swung their auto sensors. The smell of purifying incense filled the air. Each youth sang the plain song chants of their order in time to the measured thrumming of the giant generators. Overhead, chained lightning leapt between two huge glass globes, and for a moment, the acrid taint of ozone warred with the sweetness of the demon bane and witch root. At his control lectern, Chief Tech Priest Hieronymus Lasky made last-second adjustments to the controls. The phosphorescent rune scrolling up the lectern underlit his face and made him look sinister in the extreme. Lasky raised one metal claw above his head and the tech priests fell silent. The air thrummed with the surge of barely contained energies as the ancient machines prepared to perform the tasks they were designed for. Stern took a deep breath and closed his eyes. He checked his mind blocks and thought screens, and one by one recited the last six of the 666 secret words. Tension built in the pit of his stomach. He fought to expel it. It was always the same before he went into action. He did not like teleporting. The sudden gut-twisting sense of dislocation, the freezing cold, and the momentary touch of nightmare tentacles as his body was suddenly elsewhere. He reminded himself that it was his sworn task to endure such things, and that there were far worse things to be faced in the line of duty. There were things like the foes he would soon face. He felt a surge of justifiable pride in his ability to defeat the spawn of chaos. He swiftly suppressed it. Pride was one of the 666 sins which enabled the spawn of the warp to control their mortal pawns. Had not the War Master himself, greatest of the Emperor's chosen Primarchs, fallen victim to pride. It had been Horus's folly to believe that he could master chaos, rather than be its slave. Stern knew this to be sheer madness. The demons of chaos acknowledged no masters save the four great powers themselves, and what were those except demons grown mighty beyond mortal reckoning? Stern knew that he had to be doubly on his guard because he was a psyker, and psychers were particularly vulnerable to the malign influence of chaos. For psychers drew their power from the warp itself, and what was the warp save the immaterial sea in which demons swam? Stern knew that he must be ever on his guard against the terrible lore of chaos. Demons devoured the souls of unwary psychers, and used the burned-out shells of their bodies to perform their unspeakable acts of evil among mortal men. He knew this because he had spent his entire adult life hunting down such creatures. His fist clenched around the grip of his nemesis force weapon. He had richly purified it himself, seen it blessed in the ship's chapel, and anointed with unguents inimical to the demons of the warp. With this weapon, Stern had dispatched countless foes of the Emperor to their well-deserved graves. With it, he had banished dozens of the lost and the damned back to their home in the warp. He glanced at his men once more, certain that their faith was stronger than steel, and more enduring than the malice of demons. As children, they had been handpicked from among the deadliest warrior races of the Imperium and brought to the fortress monastery on Titan, the greatest moon of Saturn. They had been implanted with the gene seed of their chapter and been transformed into towering supermen, 
capable of withstanding the worst that the universe could throw at them. They had been put through the sort of training that would have killed lesser men, and that had been only the start of their testing. Each man present had endured the 666 tests, and had survived not only with their sanity intact, but with it strengthened. These were elite of the Imperium, the best of the best, the finest fighters ever to be fielded by the human race. None of them knew his world of origin. None of them had any allegiance other than to the chapter and their emperor. They were privy to the most nightmarish secrets that humanity had uncovered during its long, slow expansion across the galaxy. They knew all that humans had uncovered about the demons of chaos and the warp that contained them. They lived with knowledge that would have blasted the sanity of ordinary men, and they endured. Theirs was the burden of facing the minions of chaos wherever they should appear to menace the citizens of the Imperium. The chained lightning crackled once more, and for a moment reality flickered. The air shimmered and the temperature dropped. Cold mist began to appear in an area that mere moments before had been warm. Lasky passed his hand across the lectern and muttered an incantation. The protective amulets he wore blazed with power. A frown of concentration passed across the tech priest's face as he wrestled to bring the gigantic energies of the teleporter under control. Stern wondered for a moment whether some demonic influence could be tampering with the teleporter's ancient mechanism. This ship was as well protected as any ever devised by man. But Stern of all people knew that no protection was infallible. Still, if it were truly the case that the powers of chaos were tampering with their ship, there was nothing to do except pray and have faith in the Emperor. Suddenly, Lasky smiled and made the sign of the great engine over his breast. The air shimmered once more. Phosphorescent fire danced around the lines of the pentagram. For a moment, the cold of interstellar space scared Stern to the bone. He heard the gibbering voices of demons and the oozing touch of tentacles. Others might dismiss them as figments of their imagination, but he knew that they were horribly real. The sensation lasted but a moment, and then was gone so swiftly that it was like a dream. Stern stood in the throne room of the rebel governor's palace. Gazing at the man who sat on the huge, brazen throne, he knew that the worst fears of those who had reported the uprising were justified. The governor was a tall man, powerfully built. Once he had been a warrior, and only now was he running to fat. He rubbed his neatly trimmed goatee beard with pudgy fingers and cocked his head to one side curiously, as if five mighty Terminators teleporting into his audience chamber was an everyday occurrence. Reading his aura, Stern could tell the man was worse than mad. He was possessed. The Governor's Guards Men whose lined faces spoke of witnessing many horrors brought their weapons to bear on the Grey Knights. They died, almost instantly, in a hail of storm bolter fire from the Grey Knights. The shells pattered like gentle rain from the glowing aura that surrounded the governor. The possessed man laughed, and the sound of his wild mirth echoed through the richly decorated chamber. Surely you can do better, Brother Captain Stern, he announced. Stern did not pause to wonder how the demon could know his name. He had long ago become accustomed to the powers and knowledge these mighty creatures could possess. Instead, he began the exorcism, bringing the full force of his mighty will to bear on the creature. As he chanted, the governor began to writhe. The muscles in his neck stood out like hawser cables drawn tight. It looked as if giant snakes were writhing underneath his skin, distorting the lines of his body. 
Suddenly, the man exploded. Gobbets of flesh showered outward, blood spattered all over Stern's armor. Now came the worst part. The man's skeleton still stood upright. All the internal organs were revealed in their pulsing horror. Slowly, but surely, they unwound, muscles unraveled, and veins unknit. Then all the flesh began to flow together again in a new and hideous form. From somewhere, additional mass and bulk was added. The thing was towering and serpent-necked with a hideous vulpine head and enormous wings that fanned the stinking odor of the creature's body towards the Grey Knights. A nimbus of multicolored light surrounded its flesh. It was a lord of change. Worse, it was a lord of change that Stern recognized. Mukachun, Stern breathed. I told you we would meet again, my dear captain, said the demon, its voice strangely sweet and seductive. I banished you once. I can do it again. Oh, captain, you disappoint me. Couldn't you tell I was just playing with you? In the name of the Emperor, be gone, shouted Stern lashing out with a bolt of pure psychic power. The demon reeled backwards, its outline shimmering. For a moment it seemed to totter on the verge of dissolution, but then it pulled itself back and its outline stabilized. If that's the best you can do, Captain, commend your soul to chaos. It sniggered. Fire at will, men, was Stern's only reply.